What's going on fam? It's your boy Sydney from the NakedGardeners.com. Today we got an exciting video for you where we're going to do our first official garden tour of the year and we're also going to be harvesting and pruning some of the plants that needed to be pruned and cut back so they can continue to grow. So let's get grown. So here we're going to start off. This is our uh, pickling cucumbers. Now we initially had it over off to the beginning of our garden uh, beds but we decided to put it off over here so that way it can block some of the morning sun because here in Northeast Texas it does get extreme hot. So we planted dill before and this is our first year or first time growing on this property and it's been actually doing very well. Uh, the missus has been using it in some of her pickling dishes and uh, some of them have been drying out and I think we're gonna harvest the seeds so that way we can replant them again next year. But now we're gonna get to a point where it's time to start succession planting a lot of these uh, picklings. So we're gonna be doing that here pretty soon. Here we have our tomato row and I decided to do a lot of what I did last year is do a lot of interplanting and companion planting with our main crop. We're gonna harvest some of this and let it keep on growing. The missus has been, uh, looks like she's been harvesting some of this already. And she's gonna be starting adding this to some of her uh, tomato paste and tomato sauce and other types of things. Maybe, maybe even doing some more pesto. So it looks like we've been having some grasshopper bite through that, but we're gonna be harvesting some of this today. Matter of fact, I'll do that now along with, there's a lot of tomatoes on, on here that's about to be ripening up. Uh, this right here is the Bush Goliath. Uh, we also have a lot of, towards the end there, we have some Roma tomatoes. I think some of the Roma tomatoes need to be harvested. So we're gonna start harvesting a lot of that right now. Here, I'm just gonna prune some of these dead leaves to get some better airflow. So we have some marigolds to kind of be as a companion plant and to kind of help with the hornworms. Dang, these has gotten big. Tall and big. Uh, this is the Roma tomatoes. They're gonna start popping off pretty soon, it looks like. We've, we've had a great year so far with these uh, tomatoes. Well, with the tomatoes in our garden, period. Normally, we would have grow a lot of indeterminate tomatoes. Uh, but they'll start off good at the beginning of the year. Then around this time, this pewter off, as you can see with these determinate, they're set with a certain amount of fruit. And so they're just gonna be uh, continue to grow off till they set all their fruits and then we'll succession plant and replant those. All right, so here we have some nice Roma tomatoes. Now they haven't fully blushed out and you want to have them uh, look at the height of the heat of the day because that's when the sugars of these get real nice and good but like I said uh, in previous videos we had to harvest these kind of like this because otherwise other rodents and pests will be on these and the missus what the missus has been doing with these is oops, is been coring these out and um, putting them in the freezer and then once she gets a certain amount, what's the certain amount you, you're trying to get to? 10 pounds. So once she gets to about 10 pounds, uh, she'll make a, a nice batch of these. So these are our chives. They did most of their blooms. I think next time what we're going to do, we're going to cut about four inches above the ground. And then we're going to start uh, harvesting these because you could use these as uh, dehydrate them, or you can even use the green parts. Uh, so we're going to just take about a hemp like this, and we're just gonna use my sharp knife from MK Knives, and use the rest for some mulch across here. 
and then these will be about 30 days I can harvest these again and they'll be nice and fresh and we can use them in like dehydration or just use them in soups, salads or things of that nature. Now this next row over is our pepper row and we have the different varieties of peppers on here. This zinnia, man, this zinnia is looking lovely. Look how fat that head is looking. I think I wanna, yeah, I think these are either the purple prints or the uh, encantus, but uh, these are looking good. However, they're uh, pushing down on this uh, pepper plant here. So I'm gonna have to cut this zinnia off. Uh, should have been staking these off. It actually been moving this pepper plant over off to the side. So where's my little shears here? We'll just cut this to give this pepper some more air. It was, but I brought, oh, these are no good to keep. And then this one as well. All these are, that's a spent head. Now, one thing I learned about zinnias this year, even though they are not perennials, if you let them go to seed like that, next year we'll have some more uh, zinnias right here. So now I just need to get a stake and stake this up. Oh, we got some nice sized peppers on here. They look like they'd be ready to harvest here shortly. Uh, this right here is uh, salvia that I've took from my father's garden after he passed. I use this uh, kind of as a remembrance to him. It needs to be trimmed back. The early part of the spring, we had tons of bees. We're still getting some uh, pollinators on there as the, as the uh, flowers are uh, kind of dying off. We're just gonna harvest some to kind of clear this uh, pathway. I did it earlier this year because it was just real bushy. We got a tick right there. So anything that comes out past here, we're just gonna chop away. These are uh, perennials, so you don't have to worry about harming these. And it smells so good. I'm not sure what the smell is like. Can you describe the smell? It's almost like steak. You wanna try dehydrating some of that? If y'all know how to Use salvia, comment down below. Look at all these roly polies. They were just having a field day. So this is our Korean, what's it called, official word of it. It's the Korean dark green pepper. It's I believe supposed to be a, a spicy pepper. We're getting a ton of these. We have one kind of going red right now. Uh, so it's only probably within a few weeks that the rest of these is going to go red. The missus wants to make some type of Korean uh, spicy paste that's going to help with or that you can add dishes to like kimchi and other uh, stir fry dishes. So we're excited to uh, get this. This one we grew from seed. So we're excited about uh, making some type of spices and paste and other things off of our plants here. So the missus was saying that when it's green like this, it's not as hot. That's correct. <laughs> so when it's red, it's really hot. So this and the hot banana pepper has the same type of heat. It's not that bad. It first hits you and then it mellows down. That's not bad. So that's when it I know I'm going to be hurting later on though. So next row over is another tomato row. Uh, we have different varieties. I was trying to get this one 
continuous variety all the way down, but it didn't work out that way due to the germination factor. But we had a store-bought uh, tomatoes uh, with these, and these are the classic paste Roma tomatoes. Uh, this one, it's a patio tomato, and it's, it looks like, I'm going to go ahead and harvest this one. Nice, good size. And there's another one back here. Man, last year we never had all these tomatoes. There's two more, looks like, on here that are um, blushing, but we won't harvest those just yet. We will harvest these onions. These were from some sets that I uh, did early of this year. So we're gonna let these cure, and then we'll use these for, uh, for powders. And this one didn't really do too much. So I did these as to kind of help warn off the uh, any type of pests like tomato hornworms. Yeah. So I feel like with this method kind of helped. I believe I felt like it helped. So this time last year we had hornworms not only eating our tomato plants, but also our pepper plants. Uh, so I guess they we're attacking a lot of the nightshade family. So I feel like with the companion planting with the onions, the herbs and other stuff like the flowers kind of helped because the flowers brought beneficial insects that would attack the hornworms and whatnot. And uh, I've, we've been seeing a lot of hummingbirds and other uh, you know, beneficial bugs that's on these flowers has just been amazing. Here is another store-bought um, tomato. We bought the starts from uh, the, one of the big box stores. I know, I know. However, this is a patio hybrid tomato. And so we're going to be, it's been coming off like with some good tomatoes. This is going to be real busy this week. Kind of did a little bit too much watering right there, but... I'm fine with that. It's gonna be a song. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we're tomato rich. Last year we were cucumber rich. Got what about this one? You think I should get this? Yeah, no. What do you think? Um, I mean it can finish ripening on the counter. I'd rather you get it now. Okay. And then we'll do some more of this basil here. I'm not sure what type of tomato these are. Oh, here we go. No, that's marigolds. Not sure. Nice size. Uh, so, you said with the basil? So we got so much basil planting in between the, around the tomatoes that the missus been um, making a pesto, putting them in like a muffin pan. And then uh, when it's time to use it, she, what she would do is uh, she would put it in the refrigerator, kind of let it defrost and been using that on our sandwiches instead of mayonnaise. So this row after the tomato row is another pepper row. This one's more of uh, the sweet one. I believe a lot of these right here are the bell peppers. And they're not as big as I would like. We've never really grown truly big size ones. Uh, the missus said that she's been harvesting some of these uh, as they get bigger. I believe there's some bigger ones that, uh, later down the row here. She's been uh, pickling them and some of the relish that uh, she's been making out here. Oh, this is a nice size one. And we still have some left over. And we still have some left over from last year? Yeah, that I like, planted. So she has some from last year that she's uh, blanched and froze. That's in the freezer right now. And we've been cooking with it all year long. And we've been cooking with it. 
majority of almost all year long. <laughs> Don't see any of these. So these are uh, the sweet peppers that we got from the local nursery here. And I feel we're gonna be going back there again here shortly. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, so it's called Kelly's Produce. Do you get very good cheap start for like pennies on the dollar? Man. That we know yeah. And she grows a lot of stuff, or I don't know if it's really a woman, but they grow a lot of stuff that uh, grows very well in our area. There's so, a big one that needs to be pulled. It's got a rock. Huh? Oh, sunburn on it. Looks like a hole's in it. Yeah, so this is why we kind of harvest a lot of these, try to get them as early as possible, and just let them, especially with our tomatoes, let them finish out on the counter get go turn it red because of sunburns and animals like to chew on these so we'll just throw these to the uh chickens so this was an experiment that went very well last year so we decided to grow it again this year it's called the, the borghese tomato it's like a paste tomato we're not sure where exactly we learned about this from we think it was jill from whispering willow because she was saying, or someone was saying, that this was supposed to be the best tasting paste tomato. And so the Mrs. Naked Gardener has been using a lot of this in different dishes. And uh, we've grown to like it last year, so we decided to grow it more in a stable si uh, a situation. So we decided to grow in a more stable situation and we've been getting abundance of uh, tomatoes off of this, as you can see, and they're gonna be ripening up e even more as the season gets hotter. So Mrs. Naked Gardener put some uh, lemon basil uh, at the end of this. So at the end and the beginning of each row, we'll have some type of herbs. Uh, so not only do we have the spicy oregano, we also have the lemon uh, basil and we have some regular basil and some lavender back behind us. I think this is probably the only one because right here we've had this Right here, we had this uh, purple Brussels sprout that's been here for now like two years now. And looks like we finally uh, are getting some uh, Brussels sprouts on here. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully this year we will be able to harvest our own Brussels sprouts. So here we have some squash. Our neighbor gave us uh, some squash. And she has some two extra plants and we've been putting them in this bed and they've been, we've been getting some huge, huge uh, squash for these. They're probably like one pound squash. And as you can see, they've been dying off, but we grew these in our, our first no tool bed. And so we're gonna do a succession plant of some zucchini and some more squash to be put in here. With the squash that we've been harvesting from here, as she's been making like a, a relish uh, off of this, and also been doing some stir fries and some other recipes. We're gonna be able to pull these out here later on and start some seeds for some other ones. This is our other uh, no-tool bed that we started off with. Uh, we decided to put our strawberries in here and we didn't know how much strawberries grew. We already even have runners out here <laughs> that we're going to uh, probably a succession plant or pot up and probably be selling these uh, for next year or something. We'll find out. Mrs. Naked Gardener uh, decided <laughs> to uh, get a pineapple sage. We, I tried to grow it two other times and they just would not do anything. We decided to put it directly into the ground and it's, I think it's almost invasive. It's been growing back. Uh, we're trying to think of some ways to uh, harvest this and use it for a particular um, a dish. I know this is a good host, host plant for butterflies, uh, especially I think monarchs. Uh, they'll love going off of these beautiful flowers that they've been pr uh, producing here. So if y'all know anything about pineapple sage, 
uh, comment down below, let us know what you use them for. So here is one of the beds that the missus was trying to get on to me on another video where we planted some uh, asparagus in here. And uh, this is the purple passion that we got from Stark Brothers. And oh, we did it from Crown. And we're going to be, hopefully be able to harvest a lot of these next year. Every now and then we'll get a, a small little bud and we'll have it like a, a garden snack, but they won't be officially ready till next year. We've been getting some seeds onto these and they're gonna be able to harvest these and use them as a plant for next year. So here, Mrs. Naked Gardener has some lettuce basil. Uh, last year, uh, she was using a lot of these in our, our sandwiches, uh, especially during the summertime. Uh, they have a, uh, they normally get a little bit larger, but I, I think we kind of planted them late. And here we have, what kind of? We got some more lemon basil. And uh, right. We got that for more flavor and pesto, she says. Uh, here we have some uh, Jamaican roselles. These are the seeds that we've got from Dan uh, Food Forest. And uh, we're actually gonna be giving two of these to uh, one of my best friends because they love, they're Panamanian, they love uh, this. Yeah, and we also sell them. So if you're in the Lamar County area or willing to come to the Lamar County area, and would like to purchase these, just hit us up on their email, teamholland77 at gmail.com, and we'll make arrangement for you. Uh, last, was it last year we grew this hoppy uh, sunflower? Uh, when we were in our urban backyard garden near Dallas, uh, we grew these when they first came out from Baker's Creek. Apparently you can use these seeds uh, or part of the flower to make a, a dye. Uh, with it. It's like a blue purplish dye, I believe. Uh, so the Mrs. Nick are going to put this in here and it just, as you can see, is almost like six feet tall. So this bed is a new bed. It's our first of the two expansions of this year where the miss, we had some extra cattle panels. So the missus wanted to grow some loofahs since we're doing soaps now. And uh, we got some good loofahs. The only thing with loofahs, they take a while to bloom off and then uh, for the fruit and then you have to let it dry out onto the stock and it's a very long progress uh, process uh, but we have two of these so we have one on this bed well you have I think probably like two on on this bed and some more on the other bed but we also decided to grow other things we got our watermelons that is growing right here we also have some um, pollinators uh, some some more zinnias that is going to help bring the pollinators and the missus got some uh, some more flowers. It looks like sunflower. What kind of sunflower? Teddy bears. Uh, those are some teddy bears as well. And then we had a random uh, plant. We don't know if it's a squash, melon, but it looks familiar. One of those two. We decided just to plant it in this bed to see what happens. What what we will get from here. So. So here we have some Aji uh, peppers. Now we've actually had these, I don't even know how long, but we didn't start coming to our attention until uh, Jill and Nate was growing these last year. And they're supposed to be the best or the most expensive peppers. So we wanted to try them out to see how, how they are for taste wise. And we got a few fruits off of here already. Not sure exactly when we're supposed to pick these out. Uh, the Mrs. Naked Garden also has some spicy bush uh, basil. I wonder how they taste. If they got a little peppery or not. A little peppery, ooh. <laughs> yeah, peppery. All righty. Uh, we had something growing in here. You had this cute, this uh, squash, but it didn't grow, it didn't germinate. Uh, so she decided to put these, since we ran out of space in the garden, as you can see. And this is called, Calabaza squash, a subscriber sent us these. Oh, okay. Rico. So this, I've never had this, never know, known anything about it. This is the only fruit that I could see that we have. Ooh, that just leaves an aftertaste in your mouth. Um, I'm interested to seeing how these are. I wonder how the seeds are. I wonder if we can even roast them as eat them like pumpkin. Look like you could possibly do that. You can use it as like a pumpkin and uh, let it get hardened off and whatnot. Does it stay this color? 
she feels that we can use this as a butternut squash. We're gonna wait till this tendril it definitely goes brown. I guess you, you, that's the way we can uh, figure out when this uh, fruit is gonna be ready to, to harvest. So this is not our normal Zucchino Rampicante uh, squash that we normally grow. Mrs. Neckergardner found another variety of the Italian culture. This is called Trombonzino squash. It's the same, looks like they look the same as the uh, Rampicantes. Now with these, you can actually eat these once they get like this, this green. Or you can wait till they get real dark and hard. Like this right here. And they are great when you eat them like this as a butternut squash where you can roast them and make them into a, a soup. So they're very versatile. And the great thing about these, they are very resistant to pests like the squash vine borers, squash bugs, all of that. So if you want to grow squash and be, you can eat them young like this where it's like a zucchini or you can wait till they get big and hard like a uh, regular butternut squash. Speaking of butternut squash, let's roll over to the next one. Now, this is our first, no, second uh, year growing uh, successful with butternut, right? Yes. And we grew some and they didn't really, were ready to harvest till the end of the summer of last year. And we still have some, right? Like two or three of them? I already finished them. Oh, so as you can see, we love growing winter squash because they have a, long shelf life that anywhere from six months to 12 months. I think we have one that's ready to harvest. Looks like the tendril is dry right here. And what the Mrs. Naked Gardener wants to do with these is to uh, make some soup. And since she's into pressure canning, um, she's gonna make some of these to be ready to go so that way if we're ever out of power or whatever it needs to be, we'll have some canned butternut squash ready to, uh, ready to eat. This is our Punta Cara. I'm not sure, why did you want her to grow this? So she heard that this was supposed to be the sweetest slicing cucumber. Is this one ready to harvest? It gets this color. Now it starts off like a regular, uh, let's see if I can find one. Well, it kind of starts off like this and then it gets weird color orange like this. Set behind it. And so you'll know when it's ready to harvest once it gets somewhere to, to this color. Now you can harvest uh, it when it's little like that. So um, for pickling, like if you're gonna pickle it, it's okay to go ahead and harvest it before it turns brown. But if you're gonna use it as a slicer, then uh, you want to get it when it's brown. Yeah. So can we eat it raw? Yeah. You want to try it? I've had it. Now our friends Chris and Cheryl, they are also growing this. Chris and uh, Cheryl at uh, Back to Our Roots Homestead, they're growing this down, down further south of uh, Texas. And they've been harvesting a lot of these. Not too bad. It's different. It is a little bit sweeter. There's more seeds. Yeah, there is more seeds. It has more white flesh than anything. So you can actually really use this as uh, like melon balls maybe. Mm. Not bad. So this is our regular market more cucumbers. We're also growing some more dill around each of the cucumbers and uh, we're using them in some of these pickling dishes. So uh, we haven't been as fruitful with these as we were last year, but they're, they're starting to pop up a lot more now. This is actually pretty, it's growing on me. Um, in front of here, we got some artichokes. We ran out of room in our artichoke bed, which we'll go over to next. Um, they started off very slow. Not sure what happened to them, but they bounce back beautifully and they're growing. So we're just gonna let them be. Right here is our, I think this is called 
Korean hyssop hummingbird mint. And we've had this now for like four years in this pot. We cut it down or it'll die off and it just grow back up. It's something that what we're gonna have to do now. Uh, normally there's like a ton of bees just smothering uh, this plant. And the good thing about this, you can use these leaves because it's part of the mint family and like teas and, and things of that nature, it helps uh, reduce anxiety. So if you're looking for something for another tea source, do these uh, hyssops. I just noticed that with that mint and a bite of this cucumber, it is phenomenal. It is so good. Mm. Found me a new snack. Ooh, maybe some slices of this with that and some water. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. We didn't grow this calendula. It just happened to be a volunteer. Well, not only that, we it was in a, a, a pot and we felt like some of the seeds fell over and then with Mrs. Naked Gardener also throwing some seed or the deadheading. So this calendula, well, any calendula has a lot of benefits uh, growing them. It's a great medicinal. You can eat the flowers. It's supposed to be, the leaves are supposed to be edible as well. But you, you're very, these are good to be dried, which you're, what Mrs. Naked Gardener is doing right now is dehydrating them. Are you making a powder with them or just dehydrating them? She's going to be dehydrating these and we're going to add these to our beauty products like our soaps and salves and tinctures and stuff like that. Along with probably even infusing them with some uh, oils, different types of oils and stuff. So stay tuned for that. Should I try one? don't know. It's not bad. It's not horrible. Here is our artichoke bed. These were just covered with aphids. We decided not to do anything besides just uh, add some, um, what is this, marigolds here and some lemongrass. And we noticed that it was bringing a lot of the ladybugs. And then I guess the ladybugs was eating the uh, aphids as well because there's no more aphids on any of these leaves. And so the inners, as you can see, is coming back vigorously. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna take all of these exterior, exterior leaves and just move them out the bed just in case if they're disease ridden. And then that should kind of beautify this area out and give these uh, marigolds and uh, lemongrass plenty of room to uh, help bring in some of the pollinators. So a lot of people are growing artichokes and are thinking once they get the artichoke head, what to do with it. The Mrs. Naked Gardener got me onto artichokes, but when we first went to well, the Cheesecake Factory and she ordered some and we decided to make our own and it's been a lot better than what the, uh, the uh, Cheesecake Factory been making. So I can only imagine how a fresh straight from the garden is gonna be of the artichokes. So if y'all looking for that video, We'll probably, once we harvest the uh, heads of the artichoke, we'll be doing a quick little recipe. And I'd normally do the sauce, but that was taking a lot of time. So we just was getting like a garlic Parmesan dressing uh, from the, one of the big box grocery stores. And it's just a lot easier. It'd be great to make our own, but it just take time. This is another one of our asparagus beds. This is the Mary Washington. This is the classic variety. Um, you also grew, are growing, what kind of sunflower are these? These are Lemon Queen's uh, sunflowers. You get one, two, three, four, five growing out here. Then we had two of these uh, asparagus kind of die off. They didn't grow, so, uh, but I think we should be fine with these amount that's gonna be here. Here is Mrs. Naked Gardener's bed. She was very adamant about having this five by 10 bed that she could just throw, put anything in here. Uh, she has different types of watermelon in here. What else do you have in here? So she has some type of uh, it's called 
Sartreuse melon, supposed to be some type of sweet tasting. It's some French melon that's supposed to be the sweetest melons. And then she has some of these uh, sunflowers that we were gifted when we went to the Oki Homestead last year from Haas Tools. And that's gonna help uh, with bringing some pollinators uh, to these melons once they are done sending out all their male fruits. And as you can see, we got plenty of flowers everywhere. This is the other strawberry patch we got from uh, Stark Brothers. This is the All-Star Juneberry. Uh, when we first planted this, uh, it didn't get a lot of water. So a lot of it didn't get as uh, fruitful and um, much green as this one or as the other one that we got. But uh, we still see some green and I'm not too worried about it because with these, with the runners, they're going to be producing this bed will eventually get full coming come uh, next year. Uh, the missus has uh, some sunflowers in here, tall orange. And so this is our first time growing, uh, well, really a lot of sunflowers, this many of sunflowers and being successful with the sunflowers. Uh, this helped bring some more pollinators along with the zinnias that we have here. We got some uh, Rubecchia that's back over in the corner to help with the squash. So all of this should uh, be pollinated, bring on the pollinators to help bring us a lot of fruit, especially when these roselles come. Let's take a look at these roselles. So here we have Jamaican roselle or hibiscus. Uh, last year we grew, we tried to grow these in containers. They didn't do too well till we put them in one of our no tool beds and they just started being growing abundantly with all these pods and stuff. The missus was able to make an alternative to a cranberry sauce. Um, and we were giving out to some of our uh, uh, Panamanian uh, friends that from the islands and they absolutely loved it. They asked us if we're going to grow it again uh, uh, next year, which is this year, if we can give them some plants. And so we uh, honored them some plants or gifted them some plants. And uh, so the missus decided to grow even more. So we have 10 in here out of a 30 foot bed and can't wait to around November, September timeframe, maybe even October to start harvesting these. Last year, uh, we had a lot of fruit trees that we were planted out in the ground, especially in the pasture. Uh, but the frost kind of killed those off. Luckily, Stark Brothers was able to replace some of these. Now with the Rosa Plum, uh, we were, we had some of these, well, I think most of these over by our greenhouse and uh, they wasn't get the amount of water that they should. So we brought them over here and they actually look a lot better than what they were before. Uh, here we have, it looks like a peach tree. Yes, it's a Georgia peach. We had some red currants. I think this is a gala apple, another peach tree. It actually had some great blooms on this, but that uh, all of a sudden that heat wave came through and just knocked them all off. I was surprised that uh, the Mrs. Persimmons tree um, is coming back. This is a Fuyu Persimmons that she's been wanting since being onto the property. This improved my lemon, I'm surprised that it's growing back. As you see, there's a lot of dead leaves. We thought it was dead, then all of a sudden it just started growing back. This is another uh, Georgia peach tree. So, Brooke, as you see, I do have fruit trees. I just don't have anywhere to put them just yet. And then we also have a red currant tree um, back over there. This is the black currant, that's the red currant. And then over here, let's go take a look over there. Here we have an improved Meyer lemon. Uh, this one I bought this year because I thought the other one uh, was dead. And uh, we have one fruit and it looks like to get some more blossoms on it. Here we have our LSU fig tree that has uh, quite a few figs on here. I know the missus is gonna be excited when she's gonna be able to harvest it. Once it's ready to harvest, it'll be able to, it'll look like it's drooping over. That's when you know it's uh, ready to harvest. This is an avocado tree. I think this is the female one. Nope, this is the Super Haas avocado tree. Um, we had one last year, but the frost just killed it off. Doesn't look 
too great right now. I'm gonna have to look like I'm gonna put some iron in there. We've been getting grown, well, not grown on purpose, but got some grass that's been uh, growing up in there. So we got to do deal with that and mulch a lot of these because a lot of these have shallow roots. But all in all, broke. we do have fruit trees. We just haven't planted them in the ground just yet. Once we get our orchards all, all squared away, we'll be able to do that. The missus also wants to do some, uh, some more fruit trees throughout this area, kind of expanding. Each year we try to expand out our garden area so we won't be able to um, be having chickens out through here anymore. We're gonna be uh, decreasing our flock and growing more food. And I also kind of want, because I've, I heard that elderberry does well in moist soil and this area, and this, uh, this is like a little valley crescent area, it, retains a lot of the moisture from especially when we get a lot of the rain so we're going to try to plant possibly some of um, those elderberry as a, a living fence going down up to that uh, light pole possibly so this is called the cajun jewel okra so this is supposed to be the natural uh okra and as always It's not as good as the spineless one, the, comp, the Clemson spineless one. But I did get it very young. Yeah, so the misses make uh, a lot of pickled okra. I love pickled anything. Pickled beets, pickled okra, pickled carrots, fermented carrots. Man, I just, I love the acid of it. Uh, here we have a blueberry at both ends of our tomato uh, experiment. As you can see, it's not going so well. I think the straw that I put on here was uh, taking all the nutrients up and this was keeping the soil too moist. Uh, so we're gonna have to reload and redo this. I think we're gonna go to the Kelly's produce and find some determinate tomatoes and just transplant those and just start it from that way. But all in all, we've been growing this has been a very successful year we're getting better and better uh, knowing our space each year uh, the first time when we got here we didn't know where we were going to put our stuff we just put a, a tarp over this area and just did container gardens because we got to the property late i think it was like what may may late late no probably like middle to yeah about the middle of may we got here and so it's too late to even start seeds. So we had to go to the local nursery, put a lot of stuff in containers, find out how the uh, area was. So all of this is a no-till garden area where all we do is each year add compost and organic matter to the bed. And I think that has been the true success of this because last year we didn't really use any and rabbit poop. Uh, we haven't used any pesticide whatsoever. If we do use it, it's normally gonna be a cold pressed neem oil, which is from a neem plant, uh, or we'll use a BT uh, spray. All in all, I mean, even with the hornworms that we had, we didn't really even use it for that. We just came in with the night, night vision or the black uh, light to pluck them off or we'll just see them right there and just feed them off to the chickens. We did have some uh, roly polies issues with eating our strawberries. I did get some, uh, some stuff to get rid of them and that's been helping but now we don't have any strawberries so, but at least we don't have any uh, roly polies or kill, uh, pill bugs in there. So we're gonna head off to Kelly Produce to get some uh, tomatoes, see if we can find some determinate tomatoes and restart this uh, tomato experiment. If you wanna see how we initially started this to kind of figure out what fertilizer is the best for tomatoes, we'll put that video off to the side and also in the description down below. Until the next video, let's grow together.